Welcome everybody to part three of the course on the Father Heart of God. In this course, we're going to be talking about the Godhead, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And from this Godhead, we'll be having a revelation of how God, the Father, relates with the Son and relates with the Holy Spirit. So let me begin by asking you this question. Do you have a revelation of the love of the Father for you? Do you know how much your Heavenly Father loves you? Do you know how much your Heavenly Father cares about you? This section we want to highlight the relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. A lot of us do not know the Godhead. We do not understand it very well. But I will try to throw a bit more light <clears throat> on the Godhead, on the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and how they relate to us. So let me begin with a story. When you have a revelation of the love of the Father, it changes everything. It changes the way you pray. It changes the way you have faith, the way you walk. You walk with confidence. You don't walk with fear. You, you don't walk with anxiety and depression. You don't live life like you're living alone. You don't live your life like an orphan. When you know that you have a Father who is seated on the throne in heaven, it changes everything. So let me share with you this story of a man named Smith Wigglesworth. A lot of you may know him. He's a, 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 he used to be a, a very powerful man, man of God on earth. So Smith Wigglesworth was sent by God into a, a, a land to preach the gospel. This land was a, a very demonic and dark, dark city. Let's call it like that. It was a dark city and people had always talked about how dangerous, how full of witchcraft this place is. And so God sent him to go and preach the gospel in this place. And he went and he did and he preached the gospel and a lot of people were, were getting saved. And so one night in his hotel room, he woke up to the sound of a creature in his bedroom growling and very angry at him. And when he woke up, he looked at this creature. He got the revelation that this was Satan himself. Satan had appeared in his bedroom and was very angry and very upset. And this is what he did. Uh, Smith Wigglesworth turned and saw the devil, Satan, standing there angrily growling at him. And he said, oh, Satan, it's only you. I thought it was somebody important and he turned and went back to sleep. You see, this man had a revelation of the father heart of God. He had an understanding that God was his father. God was in charge. God was in control. God sent him to preach the gospel in that land. So God was going to protect him. He knew that if this this Satan who was standing in his bedroom had any power at all over him, he would not be standing at a distance and growling. He would have been squeezing him and trying to kill him. The fact, the very fact that he was standing at a distance meant that he did not have the power or the authority or the right to touch him. So him having a revelation and an understanding of the father heart of God went back to sleep because he knew his father was not sleeping. His father was not going to sleep and watch him be slaughtered by this beast in his bedroom. So you have to have an understanding of the Father heart of God. A lot of us, if we are put to this kind of situation, we will be so scared, so afraid. We would think that we have done something wrong for the devil to appear like that. But Smith Wigglesworth had no doubt that God was his father. God was in control. God was going to protect him from this beast. A lot of us would have started praying and shouting and screaming. And, and calling down fire from on high. But this man, just with the understanding that God was his father, protecting him and taking care of him, he, he did not have anything to do. He was there accomplishing a mission that the father had given him and all he needed to do was just to go to sleep because he had mission, work to do tomorrow. So this, what does this make you? What does this, how does this make you feel? We all need a revelation of the, the, the Father heart of God so that when we enter into trouble, into trials, we know that God is with us. We're not alone. God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. 
I am with you always. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Or when you go into troubles, you, you, you when you enter trials, you feel like God has forsaken you. You feel like giving up, like quitting. That is an indication that you do not have the, the, a full revelation of the Father heart of God. When you have a full revelation of the Father heart of God and you come into problems, you enter trials, difficulties, you know that God is with you. You're not alone. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So have a revelation of the Father heart of God. Have an understanding that you're not alone, that God is with you. Is watching over you and is helping you through life. So let's proceed to talk about the, the relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our God, as you may already know, is three persons in one. We have the Father, we have the Son, we have the Holy Spirit. I've mentioned this before. A lot of us know Jesus very well because he came in person. A lot of scripture is written about Jesus, how he, he came. He was born by, by a virgin. He lived for 33 years. He died on the cross. He rose again. He ascended into heaven. He was a friend to Peter. He was a friend to, to Matthew, the tax collector. He was a friend of the sinner. So we know Jesus very well. A lot of us know the Holy Spirit. Uh, some of us know the Holy Spirit in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We speak in tongues by the, the utterance of the Holy Spirit. The, the, we, we manifest some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit like prophecy, like descending of spirits, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. So we have some kind of idea of the walking of the Holy Spirit. But not all of us have a, a walking revelation of the love of the Father. So that is a part of the puzzle that some of us may be missing. We don't really know the Father. A lot of us read the Old Testament and we see an angry God, even though people like David lived under the Old Testament and they saw a loving Father. David call, God calls David a man after my own heart, even in the Old Testament. So in the New Testament, we should have a better relationship with God than even David. So let's speak a little bit about the God heard. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 3 from verse 13. It says, Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And are you coming to me? But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Let's pause there and unpack this scripture. Jesus had lived on earth for 30 years. In these 30 years, he lived a normal life. There's not so much written about Jesus' life, except the fact that he lived like a carpenter's son. He lived like the son of Joseph, the son of Mary, he had brothers and sisters because other children were born to Joseph and Mary after Jesus. And so he lived a pretty normal life. And uh, the Bible does not record any miracles performed by Jesus until now. It was after the baptism of Jesus at 30 years of age that Jesus was ready to start his ministry. And we, we see a couple of things here. The Bible says that Jesus came to John the Baptist and said, please baptize me. And John the Baptist said, hey, you are the one who would rather baptize me. But Jesus said, no, suffer it to be so. For thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. So Jesus humbled himself and allowed John the Baptist to baptize him like he did for every other person because he wanted to show us the way. He wanted to show us a good example. Um, the Bible says in John chapter 14 verse 6 that Jesus is the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We would unpack this scripture a little later. But he is the way. He showed us the way. He showed us a good example by getting baptized by John the Baptist. 
that I want you to observe about the, the, the Godhead, the Trinity here. In, this is one of the few times in the scripture where the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are manifested at one point in one place. At the same time, at the same place in scripture. When Jesus accepted to be baptized, he was there in person. John the Baptist put him in water and he came up out of the water. The Bible says Jesus saw the Spirit of God descending upon him like a dove. This is and the, 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 a voice spoke from heaven and said, This I is well my pleased. beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So we see the Father, we see the Son, we see the Holy Spirit. Our God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three persons in one God. It is the Trinity I'm talking about, or what we call the Godhead. During the baptism of the Holy of the baptism of Jesus, we see the Father, we hear the Father speaking from heaven. He said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. First of all, I want you to note that our God is not a God of performance. You don't have to perform before He loves you. Jesus did not do anything extraordinary. He had not raised the dead. He had not even started ministry. This was his entrance into ministry. And the father is already saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So God is pleased with you. And God loves you. The father loves you. And it's not about performance. It's not about how much you can do. It's about you receiving his love in your heart. It's about you opening your heart and saying, Father, I want to come home. I am your son and I'm your daughter. And I want to live my life like a son and like a daughter. And in that, he's well pleased. So we can see Jesus had not done any miracle. He had not done anything superhuman. He just went to John the Baptist and was baptized. And the father is announcing already to everybody, this is my son. This is my son. Listen to him. I am well pleased in my son. It is what a lot of us fathers will say, I'm proud of you. But God doesn't want to use that word proud. He uses the word, I am well pleased in this my son. So first, of, first thing we note is that the father does not need us to perform to be loved. We don't need to perform any great feats. We don't need to do anything superhuman, supernatural before God loves us. The Bible teaches us that God loves us unconditionally. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, we were loved by the Father. So how much more now that we have believed, would the Father love us even more? You see, we cannot do anything for the Father to love us more. It's not about performance. All we need to do is open our heart and welcome Him, welcome His love into our hearts. So that's the first thing we observe, the, the love of the Father for Jesus. Is the same love of the Father for you and for me. So we see the Father, we see the Son, we see the Holy Spirit. Three persons in one. We serve a God who is a trinity. He's one God in three persons. One God in three persons. And let me explain to you the beauty of the trinity. The beauty of the trinity is, is that God has always existed as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And these three persons have lived together in perfect harmony from the beginning until now and forever. I don't know if you get that, but it, 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 God is, the nature of God, the DNA of God is love. The Bible says God is love. He has lived in perfect harmony the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit have lived in perfect harmony from the beginning and on to the end. There has never been a time where the Father has backstabbed the Son. There has never been a time when the Son has backstabbed the Father. There had never been a time, there has never been a time where there was an argument, where there was a quarrel between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They have lived together in perfect harmony from the beginning until now and forever. None of them wants more power. None of them wants to get rid of the other. None of them wants to, to rise up above the other. None of them wants to disrespect the other. None of them wants to mock the other. Every one of them is working together in perfect harmony and that's hope for you and I. We have the DNA of God in us. 
What does that mean? It means that because God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit live together in perfect harmony, I can live in harmony with you. I can live in harmony with my wife. There's hope for my wife. There's hope for my relationship, hope for my marriage. I can live in harmony with my children. You can live in harmony with your pastor. We can live in harmony with the, the, with, with the government. We can live in harmony with one another. There's hope for mankind. We have the DNA of God in us. This same God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit demonstrate to mankind the perfect Christian life. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit show us what the Christian life is all about. No backstabbing. No rejection. No shame. No, no, no backstabbing. No backbiting. You see, when Jesus came on earth, if the Father wanted more power, he would have abandoned the Son. He would have forsaken the Son. When Jesus went down to hell, the Father would have abandoned him. And, and taking more power. That is what man would do. But that is not what God would do. God went down to hell. If you read Psalms 18, you would see how God went down to rescue his son. To deliver him from the clutches of death. And he, he, he raised him to life the third day. Because they are in harmony. They have walked in harmony forever. We have a God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit who are walking together in perfect harmony from the beginning of time to the end of time and in eternity. And that's hope for you. That's hope for me. If the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit can live in unity and in harmony and in love, so can you. So can I. There's hope for our marriages. Hope for our, our parenting. Hope for our pastoring. We can live in harmony with our pastor. That that. There must not be problems. There must not be quarrels. There must not be arguments. They, they can be solved. They can be fixed because we have the DNA of God in us. And that is love. That is kindness. That is gentleness. That is patience. God has placed in us the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, kindness, gentleness, humility, self-control, temperance. God has placed His love in us and we can live like Him. So I wanted to share in this, in this section, the Godhead, the nature of the Godhead, how much God loves you, how much God loves me, how much of his nature he has bestowed in us so that we can live like him here on earth. Um, we are going to explain in the next, se uh, the next session, we're going to go into the story of creation. But before we we get there. I just want you to turn with me to Romans chapter 5 verse 5. The Bible says, Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So the love of God has been poured in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Every one of the persons of the Godhead has his own role. It says the Holy Spirit is the one responsible for pouring the love of God in our hearts. In Matthew chapter 28 from verse 18, the Bible says, Jesus, Jesus came and said, All power and all authority has been given unto me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is talking about the Godhead. We serve a God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, the Bible says, um, God said, Let us make man in our image. So God said, Let us. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, let us make man in our image. Let man have our likeness. We look like God. He is in the image of a man. And we have his attributes, love, kindness, gentleness. So when he says, let us make man in our image, it's in his form and in his attributes. We resemble God. We can resemble God in how we love one another. We can resemble God in kindness. That is why when you see somebody struggling, somebody suffering, you feel kindness towards them. You feel, you feel their pain. You feel compassion towards them. It's an attribute of God. Part of the DNA of God placed place in you. It's you demonstrating the image of God. Not only do you look like God, not only does God look like you, but you can also behave. You have some of his attributes. And we're going to be going into those 
in the next session. So prepare for the next session. In the, in the next session, we'll be talking about creation and how that relates to the Father heart of God. So stay tuned.